Hey, it's me, AP, aka Mr. Movie Cheer, and welcome back to another edition of Quick Topics, the show where I run through different types of movie related topics, uh, physical media, and just a bunch of questions. I just go through little different quick topics as usual, and uh, yeah, just answer as many and just, just deep dive into them. I'm, and I usually ramble in, on these intros as well, so I'm doing the same again, but. Yeah, let's get into it. So I've got six topics as always for this episode, ladies and gents. Let's get into them. So the first topic I wanted to discuss is will DVD prices rise in the future? Why DVD? Well, first of all, you can see if you're watching the video version of this, this episode, I've got you know a lot of DVDs in the cabinet here beside me. I'm a big DVD fan. Uh, I'm a, I think it's a great format and... You know, it's one of them where, we, you know, I discuss DVD a lot on the channel and it's a format I really enjoy. And will DVD prices rise in the future? So why did I, why did I think of this topic? Because I think because I look at other physical media formats, I look at stuff like LPs, you know, records. Over time, they rise in price. I think, you know, you get collectible ones. And I think obviously over the past, like probably 10, 15 years, we've seen a, an interest in buying records, you know, sort of like amp up a lot more and I think that's happening with CDs a lot now over the past few years as well um I do think some formats probably just don't kind of do get like forgotten in time I think I mean I've not really looked maybe I'm wrong but I would say like tapes are not really a format that would be like a format that would rise in price uh, maybe because of the quality of them they just don't hold up I might be wrong I may be it completely wrong there I'd probably say that that's just my estimation of what tape like when I say tapes I mean like you know music tapes um but yeah will DVD prices rise in the future so I, I think it will be something where certain DVDs will rise in the future I think because I think it's going to come to a point in time where you know there's less and less demand for DVD as a format and I think I, th I think maybe not so much less of demand I think it'll be a case where the companies are just you know more focused on streaming and you won't get as many uh, releases on DVD and physical media formats but looking at DVD mainly I think maybe obviously we'll get 4k releases for some movies but I think over time you know, I'm, I'm saying like maybe like 20 30 years time here I'm not saying in the next five years but I think I think when that comes to be then I think certain DVDs will rise in price. And I don't think it's going to be like your ones, like your Marvel DVD standard releases, your, your Disney's. I think it's going to be like more, just like movies that are kind of a bit more harder to find on DVD or that maybe like pop... I was thinking about what what type of movies. I, I think like movies like, like a movie like a Backdraft, something like that. Or like I'm trying to think, I've got a few in the collection here, like a, I don't know, like a Kelly's Heroes maybe or a... I don't know, a Hook, Escape, like Escape to Victory. It's a popular movie, but it's not super popular. I think there's going to be, I think maybe maybe them selections are wrong, but I think there's going to be certain movies that are maybe the, the, the less prints, less releases of that particular movie. And I think them ones will be the ones that rise in price more. I think like your, your Disney collections, your Marvels, probably the Star Wars, they're going to always be relatively uh, low price. Um, I mean, I, I I, that would be my my theory on that. I think I think that'll be the case where you'll get a lot of them, like movies that are harder to find. Like I said, lower lower runs of releases on a particular movie that will have more of a, a rise in price. And I think as well when you get certain editions here, like I've got a director's cut of Stargate here, and this is like a special edition, uh, which was released years ago, and it's got like this like you you know you make it into a pyramid you have shown it on the channel before. I think like special editions of DVDs will uh, rise in price as well. Again, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be down to what the print run for that particular movie was and for that particular release. Uh, but I do think they'll rise in price. I think you see it in VHS now. VHS are, are going up in price. I see it a lot. I think as well. Do you know? What I think another one where DVDs will rise in price is music concert DVDs. I think do you know if you get like a you know, like a Kiss concert or. I don't know, like a Bon Jovi. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to think of random. But I think if you get like a Queen at Wembley, like a special, uh, like a release of that, I think I think DVD releases like that may be the ones that go up in price. And I see it as well because I'm a, I'm a fan of wrestling. I think sports stuff like wrestling DVDs because they are, you know, especially WWE now, they're not doing the, the physical releases at this moment in time. They've stopped doing them. So I think them, they will rise in price over time. So some of them are quite hard 
are going up in price as it is at this moment in time. So I think over time, stuff like that will definitely rise in price. So yeah, I, I think certainly certain DVDs will rise in price over time for sure. So the X-Men 97 animated show released a trailer this past week and I, I've got to say I, I, I didn't really watch the original show. I've probably seen the odd episode here and there but I never watched it. I know a lot of people really like that show when it was out in the 90s and now we're like 30 years later they're doing a Disney Plus um, continuation of that show and they released the trailer this week and like I watched it and I thought man I tell you what that is a k killer trailer Up for an animated show really looks great. I think what, to me, it looks interesting because obviously it was a kid's show originally, but it feels like they're kind of like looking at it and it's like, this is 30 years later. Then people who were watching that show as a, as a kid and now in like the tw late 20s, the 30s, the 40s, or maybe, you know, later or maybe younger. But I think it looked to me like the trailer, the continuation was great, but I feel like they're trying to do like a... Um, a bit like a more adulty tone to this animation, which looks great. And I think it's similar to what they've done with that Masters of the Universe Revolution um, TV show on Netflix. I think, because that was obviously a continuation of the original He-Man show, which was very, you know, like a, a kid's show, but they kind of like t took it and made it a bit more adult friendly. And this looks like it, what they're doing here with this X-Men show. I, I thought it looked phenomenal. It really did really intrigued me to watch it and kind of would make me want to watch that original show as well to just kind of like see that first and then watch the continuation of it as well so honestly for a trailer i think i think it looks exciting i think this is what disney plus and marvel and well disney plus marvel and with the star wars stuff should focus more on with disney plus and rather than doing i think the have live action tv show of marvel is great but i think really do you know you know, throw out loads more animated shows like this, but high quality animation, and people will watch it. I think this is great. This is good. What what you want to see from Marvel, and then you've got the movie front. It's totally different, but again, more excitement. So yeah, I think it looks great. I love the there's the whole like the characters looked amazing. The the story they're kind of like telling with the show and the sort of like um, teasing for the show looks really brilliant. So I think it looked a brilliant trailer. I'm definitely going to be checking out X Men '97 for sure. What is the best portable movie device I have ever owned? Which one is, in my opinion, is the, the best portable movie device of all time? Well, I will say, for me, you know, there's plenty I've had over the years. I've used a laptop to watch movies on the go. I've, you know, I've had, I think I've had a PSP at one point. I, I didn't really use it that often, but uh, for, for movie watching, but you could obviously get them, is it the UMDs at the time? Uh, I will say, though, my favorite portable movie device i think for a lot of people would probably be the same but the ones that you used to have for cars so you'd be sitting in the back as a, as a kid and you'd have like the flip up screen with the dvd player in you just like open it up you put it in you get your little controller and you'd be able to watch that i mean that was like as a kid i used to do we used to do like um family journeys to, to like so like butlins pontins haven and stuff like that and i remember like going down to the likes of like minehead and Skeg Skegness, and from Movie Chair Town, it's like a, it's a good four or five hour journey to them places. And I remember it like, obviously when I was like, maybe four, four or five doing them journeys, and I'd have no entertainment. It would just be sitting in the car. Kids nowadays don't know that. They just, you know, they've got the, they got the, the iPhones, the tablets, all this. And it'd just be, you'd be sitting in the car, like back in my day, back in my day, son, we didn't have any of that. <laughs> But yeah, it's true, like, you know, you'd sit in the car, but then I suppose when I got to, like, teenage years, then we'd have the, the portable DVD players more, which was really cool, and it made journeys so much easier. In fact, you know, I'd go down and I'd have a bunch of DVDs with me and just watch all my movies and stuff going in the back of the car, and it was... It was so cool, and then obviously I'd use that in like if we were in a caravan or in a chalet or something like that. It was uh, it was awesome. I, I used to love it. I thought it was great. And um, the only drawback with them, I used to find with the one I had, I had in particular, if you kind of like were in the car sometimes, and if you hit a bump, it would like kind of like uh, like hit the the disc would rattle, and then it would sometimes stop playing. So then you'd have to go back in and like restart it and stuff like that. But I mean, it was a small price to pay to to watch a movie in in the car, and I, I it was great. And and I think another thing as well, I suppose now you have more like better headphones, were a bit like like noise cancelling headphones. You could hear you could hear the car, so you'd have to have it up to the max, and you could still hear the noise, the traffic outside as well. But yeah, for me, 
having them portable DVD players were really cool. I mean, you look at it now and the screens are like the the man you like it's like a Game Boy size screen or a DS. But yeah, they were great. Just just it was something different to watch movies on the go. It was it was very cool to do. And obviously now I think we're we're in an era now where people would just watch something on the phone. And I get that. I, I don't think I've ever maybe once I've watched something on I watch YouTube stuff on my phone sometimes, but I never would go out my way to watch it like a movie or my, on or Netflix on the phone. I just like even in my in my day job, in if it was like um, a bit of like time to pass away, I I would not get out of the phone and be like, let's uh, let's watch a movie. So it's not for me, but each to their own. But yeah, for me, it is the portable DVD uh, player. Fantastic Four has has had the uh, big reveal this past week of. You know, it's announced the cast members, the date of release for this movie, and the kind of like the idea of what what this the setting for this movie is. So, I've got the the, the cast list. We've got Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, uh, Vanessa Kirby as uh, Sue Storm, Joseph Quinn, who is in Stranger Things, he plays uh, Johnny Storm and the Human Torch, and then you've got Ebon Moss Backrack, if I'm saying that right, as the Thing. He was in, I think he's in the Burr TV show, is it? Um, is, is it the, the cooking show? I, I'm, I've never watched it, so I, I can't say. I know I know the guy's face. Uh, but it's going to be released July 25th next year. You know, I heard them say 2025, and I'm like, wow, that's years ago. That's years years away. And I'm thinking, oh, it's 2024 now. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a year it's a year to go. But um, they, they've shown um, an image on Valentine's Day of the characters in a cartoon form and... Obviously announced the release, the title of the movie, the Fantastic Four, and it's shown the picture. And I was watching an Emergency Awesome video, the great channel for movie like teasers, and they tell you like all the the behind the scenes stuff. And he he mentioned that the the Life magazine cover, the thing he's reading, it is from the nineteen sixty. I think it's nineteen sixty three. So the movie is going to be based in nineteen sixty three, by the sounds of it, or in the sixties. And that is going to be an interesting one. I think it's going to be nice to see... That's going to be something different, having like that period drama a bit, you know, like it's going back in time. Whether they come from the future or they come from the past and move to the future at some point because they're going to obviously link up with the rest of the MCU. I think it would be... I think it'd be kind of cool if they, they went back into the past and then went into the future, maybe. I like do that sort of thing. And like, I think that'd be great to see. But um, I'm looking forward to it. I think Pedro Pascal... I was kind of thinking, because they had that um, John Krasinski play um, Reed Richards in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, and I think he was a big fan casting, and I thought that was great to see at the time. I thought he could have he could have potentially done the role as well. But Pedro Pascal, Mandalorian, Last of Us, uh, he's been in a few different movies over the years, Game of Thrones. I think he's a great, he's got a great pedigree to, to work with Marvel. He's obviously Star Wars. I think he's a great choice, personally. I think he's a Steady pair of hands. I think they've got the guy, I think it's Matt Shackman, who directed uh, WandaVision. So he's done a lot of them sort of thing, the the shows in that where it was based in like the 60s, the 50s. So I think it'll be exciting. I think it's going to be good. I think Fantastic Four has not really been done justice in movie form, live action form in the past. So it'll be nice to see a live action and hopefully it works. I think they've got the right cast there, really good cast. And I'm excited to see it. I think it's going to be somewhat different. And I think I think it's like a new sort of era for Marvel moving forward over the next year or two. So I'm looking forward to that. The Fantastic Four, I think it's a great cast. I like the idea of it in the 60s. I, I think there's going to be a lot of like, you're going to hear the Beatles and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, like some of that blues music from the time, the early blues, blues music, rock and roll. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really fun. So this past week as well, we got the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer from, from the Super Bowl. And to me, this is how you do a trailer. It doesn't, doesn't give you too much. It's just a nice little tease. We hardly saw, we didn't see Wolverine's face. We saw his like silhouette, the back of his head. And they, they didn't give us too much. And that's what I liked about it. And I'm kind of, again, I say this, I'm going to avoid the rest of the trailers come out because they probably end up showing stuff. I thought like Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, they've shown way too much. Um, this movie looks great. I think the first two Deadpool movies were really uh, fun movies. I think this is going to be no different. I think it's going to be great having Hugh Jackman and, and Ryan Reynolds together on screen again in a movie. I'm glad that Hugh Jackman's come back. I know he said he was kind of like retiring after Logan. But Logan's going to be, and Logan and this are going to be night and day, a completely different incarnation of the character. 
Uh, I love that they're bringing the yellow suit in, and obviously they're going to bring the helmet, which has been teased previously, but we've never seen it in live-action form. Um, him wearing the suit anyway, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be very fun to see. Like I said, the trailer looked brilliant. Uh, him working with the TVA, um, I think that's going to be very silly. I think we're going to see a bunch of cameos throughout the Marvel you know, Cinematic Universe history and obviously Marvel films that weren't in the MCU, so that's going to be great. So I think it's going to be a great movie. I think it's going to really be a really fun experience. Marvel is only having one movie released this year, which is Deadpool and Wolverine. So I think it's got to be good. It's got to be big. I think it's going to make a lot of money. And I think it's good that Marvel is just doing one movie a year now. I think next year they got the... I don't know if the Thunderbolts is still coming out next year or if that's been taken the spot by uh, Fantastic Four or if they're releasing both. But I think that's the way to do it with these movies now. Do one a year for the Marvel movies. I think it brings... You know, there's not too much. It's not oversaturated. And I think for a long time, Marvel was that. And I think they're doing it right now. If, if that's the case, they're doing it one, a, one movie release a year. I think it's the right movie for them. So the final topic, the finally, the, <laughs> the last topic I want to discuss today is The Rock in Movies versus WWE. So you'll know if you're a regular viewer of the Movie Cheer pod, I am a big wrestling fan. Wrestling for me is probably on par with uh, with with movies, if I'm being honest. I, I love wrestling. I love reading about wrestling history, listening to podcasts, reading news on wrestling. I'm a wrestling nerd, if I'm being honest. Um, I love it. And this past week, well, we've seen over the past month, really, with the tease for WrestleMania, The Rock has come back to the wrestling world, and now he's going to be... He's very much in a storyline. He's like turned heel with Roman Reigns. He's siding with him against Cody Rhodes. Hashtag we want Cody. Rocky sucks. <laughs> but I honestly, deep down though, I'm I'm a big Rock fan. I grew up grew up watching The Rock, the People's Champ, um, trying to do the People's Eyebrow. I still can't do it. <laughs> and um, it's for me. I think it's great to see him. And you know, I was looking at what. What's better, him doing movies though, or him doing WWE? Because he's had a few great movies, but he's like one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. You know, the Fast and the Furious movies are great with him in. Black Adam wasn't great, and that kind of, I think they were relying on that, he was relying on that to be his big sort of meal ticket for movie-wise for the next couple of years. It didn't pan out. But I, I don't know, I think he's great in movies, but I think it's nice, if I'm being honest, to see The Rock kind of doing a bit of, WWE now because it's kind of what he's doing now in WWE is is very sorry, I've got a runny nose guys um, he's kind of like bringing that movie world and movie dynamic to the stories of WWE which is great and obviously WWE is drama for me it's like live action movies storytelling with you know with action sports I know it's all predetermined I'm not I'm not uh, unaware of that but it's fun um, but I think he I think it'll be nicer I think him doing WWE for a bit is great to see. I think he's he's definitely getting buzz around at the moment. People are liking his heel, his bad guy character. And yeah, I think it'll be great. I, I do like him in movies though still. I think The Rock is made for the movies too. Uh, but at this moment in time, I'm more excited to see The Rock in WWE than being honest as a wrestling fan and a movie fan. Uh, I'll gladly see him in more movies, but for now, this time being, I think he is in the right spot in the world wrestling entertainment. So that's it for another edition of Quick Topics. Uh, let me know all of your thoughts on this episode's topics, ladies and gents. What do you think, the Rocking movies or WWE? What is your pick for that? Uh, Fantastic Four, what do you think? And DVD prices, will they rise, ladies and gents? Let me know all your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to spread a bit of movie cheer. And as always, I will see you next time.